Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. The country is facing economic turmoil. And during this moment, Kenyans are looking for direction. But is there anyone to provide the leadership? Because the person in whose hands we entrusted the leadership of the country seems not to care at all. William Ruto is pushed into a corner and there are two schools of thought. He of thoughts. He's getting pieces of advice from two schools of thought. There are those people who are telling William Ruto that you are the president, you are the commander in chief of all the armed forces, you control the police, you control the military and therefore no one can stand before you and start dictating terms for you. When William Ruto dissolved his cabinet, he said it himself that he did it because of transparency issues. Kenyans made a lot of noise and he was told that the, the cabinet was corrupt and was inept and incompetent to deliver his agenda. And by dissolving that, that cabinet, he was admitting that indeed he had given us a cabinet that was incompetent, inept, and corrupt. And it goes without saying that in his right senses, he was not going to recycle leaders. Because he knew that the reason why Kenyans were angry is because of these very leaders who were just thumping driving very big cars, getting a lot of wealth. And as people were complaining, they were chest thumping. And this is one of the reasons why people got annoyed. So people knew that when William Ruto was going to reconstitute his cabinet, he was not going to give us any who was in the previous cabinet. But as I said, there are those who are telling William Ruto, bring them back because nothing will happen. In other words, Utadu, that is what they are telling him. Bring those people back, Watadu, what will Genesis do? You have the police, you have everything. But there are voices of reasoning that are telling William Ruto that there comes a time when a country is bigger than an individual. And they are telling William Ruto that you have a second chance. You can do that which Kenyans want. You can give them a cabinet with a new face. You can give them a cabinet that is not constituted by only two tribes. You can give them a new cabinet that has got just fresh blood. People are not tainted. And these voices of reasoning are the people who can look at the king and they tell the king, You are naked. But William Ruto has refused. One such voice is, is the voice of a lawyer, city lawyer Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi. And I know there are those people who don't like Ahmed Nasir because of his, his dalliance with William Ruto and how he has been supporting status quo and the government. But sometimes we need to listen to people's opinions even if in the past they have made mistakes because the truth is, if you look at people like uh, Ahmed Nasir, People like Okur Okot, people like Miguna Miguna, those are people who used to support William Samoy Ruto. And they thought that William Ruto would make them proud by, you know, making a better economy, making Kenya better. But William Ruto has disappointed them because they protected him in the midst of a lot of rebellion. When people are telling them, this president is going to deliver nothing. This is the worst president. They stood out and they said, William Ruto is going to deliver. Now they have been disappointed and humiliated and they have made a U-turn. So I want us to listen to Ahmed Nasir because I, I, I just revisited this. It was one of the warnings that came before William Ruto reconstituted his cabinet. And he told William Ruto, this is a second chance. And we believe that you are going to be true to your words. You dissolved the cabinet by telling us that it was, uh, it was lacking transparency. And therefore, there's something that he said that is very important to us. That if William Ruto is going to mess again, if he decides to give us, to recycle those names, 
then the problem is none other than William Samoruto himself. And therefore, there will not be this argument that, you know, William Ruto is good, but the people who are around him are the, are, are the bad ones. And I want you to listen to this, even if you had listened to, to, to the statements by Ahmed Nasir, just listen for a second time. And you will agree with me that the problem is William keep chair chair Araputo. Can you listen to him? Is it possible that some of the folks who have been uh, vacated of their positions could actually make a comeback in this new cabinet? Legally, they cannot make it. I think okay. we have made that point. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. The president has given very, very well reasoned mm -hmm. uh, uh, why, uh, why he dismissed them. There's governance issues, mm -hmm. he said. There's transparency issues. There's accountability. Those are his words, not mine. Eh? Mm -hmm. So if, I, if he fires uh, because of transparency and accountability, he can't, uh, you can't bring them back. He can't bring them back. Mm -hmm. But uh, w the question we ask is, why do they want to come back? Ah, yeah. Is it not the thing you who said just now? Yes, yes but why do they uh, uh, <laughs> let me take Let's take uh, one example. For example, assume Linturu wants to come back. Eh? Oh, why does he want to come back? Eh? <laughs> I mean, let's, let me ask this. Why question. would you want to? If indeed. Eh? Isn't there life after cabinet? They, they should be. They should be. Yes, yes, yes. President Ruto has an excellent chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, his government was almost run out of town by these young people who demonstrated. And they had genuine grievances because they want a better Kenya. A Kenya that listens to them, that delivers to them, does, that does not steal from them. And I think the task of the president in reconstitution his cabinet is to address that and give them competent, qualified Kenyans who are not thieves. Mm. Down. No, no, I, I think the president will not miss. I think this is a second opportunity. I mm -hmm. mean, you then if he doesn't get it right, then we will realize that the fundamental problem this country faces is the president himself. If he doesn't get it right, because he must get it right. I mean, he's even after the warnings that William Ruto was given and the pieces of advice by voices of re reasoning, I call them the voices of reasoning. People who can look at the president and tell him let us have our country back because our country has lost the direction after all william Ruto decided to give us chirchir he gave us uh, duale he gave us miano he gave us kithure kindiki he gave us the attorney general and i want you to Read what Bishop Charles Onginjo is saying. Charles Onginjo is asking this, or the, the statement is, that by recycling dismissed CSS, President Ruto just made people more angry. And probably, he does not want them to leave the protest. He is fueling the protest. And even when he is asking who is fueling the Gen Z's protest, I think he is the greatest founder by the kind of actions he is taking. I couldn't agree more with Bishop Charles Onginjo because when William Ruto was cornered, he himself came and read a public statement that if Gen Z's feel that the finance bill is wrong and it is bad, then he withdrew that, that finance bill 2024. Then they also told him that this cabinet must be re uh, re restructured and he also dissolved that cabinet. His inspector general that had uh, his hands tainted also resigned. But then what is the need of dissolving your cabinet and then giving it back? This is a slap in the face. William Ruto is telling us, Utadu. He's telling us he does not care. He's telling us he's got the police. He's, he's giving warning. When we are supposed to be warning him, ask him questions why he gave us a cabinet that was tainted. We, instead of allowing us to vent our anger and ask him, he's the one who is now telling us he will not allow demonstrations. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a demonstration beyond reason of doubt that William Ruto was never serious in the first place. He's never serious. He had a second opportunity to ensure that he became a hero. But I told you one day, and I will repeat, that there are two characters of a man. There is one that you look at the face value when I go to church and I pray and I solo and all that, and I call myself a Christian, I'm a godsend. But there is that inherent, that inherent character 
the software I call it, what I'm made of, leave alone the characters that I pretend to be, who I pretend to be. William Ruto is a dictator. That is what he is revealing to us. Why would someone dissolve a cabinet that he brings those who we don't want? And it is after an outcry. That is the same thing he did when they passed Finance Bill 2023. And he was warning, I want to see who the, the, the members of parliament who will vote down this bill. And I have a feeling that the, way, the direction that he has taken, he might even decide to give us back the Finance Bill 2024. Ruto is the problem. Like Ahmed Nasir is saying it, that if he brings back those people who are corrupt, those people have got transparent issues, and Ahmed Nasir is saying, those who are Ruto's words himself, and he has proved he has demonstrated that he himself is the problem. He does not want new faces. He wants people they can perpetuate all the atrocities together, corruption together. And this is what angers people. In the words of Bishop Onginjo, you want to anger people. You are the funder and you're the person who is fueling demonstrations, yet he's asking who is funding them. Doesn't he realize that when he ignores the plight and the pleas of people, then he's adding petrol into fire? There is no way a people can go to a, into a street and demonstrate. You pretend to be listening to them, then you negate your promises. It is wrong in human psychology that you do, does not need any rocket science. You know that when people get to the streets and they are raged, you dissolve your cabinet and you bring the same same people, then you are feeling more tension. And I wonder whether William Ruto wants a peaceful nation. Because in essence, what is now in our wants, it is like he's seeking for blood. Because the people will still go to the street demanding change. What was so difficult in William Ruto just looking for some people? We have millions of Kenyans who are qualified. Must you recycle the same? We thought he would, you know, kick the principal secretaries. We thought he would sit down without any pressure and look forward and give us a cabinet that would, you know, deliver. But no, that is not his priority. And I think the priority is just to continue looting. In essence, William Ruto is facing at his downfall. Many a times before a man falls, there is pride, there is arrogance, there is self-satisfaction that he's the best, even if he's doing the right, the, the wrong thing. And this is exactly that is happening to William Samuel Ruto. I read from the Bible, and I think those who read from the Quran also corroborate facts, that Pharaoh of Israel, of, of Egypt, had a very stone heart, very obstinate. Even in the midst of the plagues, but finally, he fell. William Ruto is an enemy of himself. In the midst of the plagues that I, what we are seeing are plagues, if you ask me, the predicaments that we are going through. And he has hardened his heart. Instead of looking at the real issues, instead of engaging Kenyans, because already William Ruto knows everything. If you wake him up, even in the middle of the night, he will tell you what Kenyans want. What Kenyans want are, you know, is implementation of the memorandum that was given. But William Ruto believes in dictatorship. You go to the street, you are punished. In the past, we have seen bodies being buried. We have seen kidnappings. And that is what he believes in. But that is the longest way. Imagine the shortest way was for William Ruto just to solve that, dissolve that cabinet, give us the best brains, this, uh, kick away the, 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 the relief, the permanent uh, principal secretaries of their duties, give us the best brains. Just implement. There are not very many things that Gen Z's and Kenyans want. And William Ruto must understand that this is not about Gen Z's. It's about Kenya. How I wish that you could look holistically at the situation and what is bedeviling us and face the problems. It's very easy. He's got the answers. It is only that he's refusing to do so. And with this, I can assure you that the battle is on. I know he feels he cannot blink, 
But before he knows it, history has proved that when you become stubborn in the face of a people on the street, rebellion is, will soon come. And if he's not very careful, he will plunge this nation into an irretrievable turmoil. No more excuses. No more accusations. Just do the right thing.